Good morning. Does everybody hear me okay? Great. Uh, my name's Tom Hayes. I'm with uh, ATS Life Sciences, representing ATS Automation and Sortimat Assembly Technologies. ATS gets asked the same question very often. How do you proceed? How do you succeed when you're faced with a problem for the very first time, something that's not been done before, uh, something where an off-the-shelf solution doesn't exist? We answer the same in every occasion. Uh, to achieve the best possible solution, you really need to understand the customer's requirements and the problem identify the critical to success quality factors, follow a structured engineering approach, but most importantly, unite best-in-class suppliers. My presentation this morning will look at a recent project executed by the ATS Life Sciences Group. So, the problem um, in this case was to be able to hermetically seal uh, a cap onto a collapsible part. Um, this part is a hollow container, liquid filled, and uh, because of the nature of this, it's uh, highly innovative and proprietary. I can't share with you specific images of the, of the product, but uh, by an example, I'd like to say that a water bottle is fairly representative. And uh, for those of you who've opened one of these recently, you know if you put a little bit too much pressure, what happens? Um, so that's the problem we were faced in this case. So the challenges we faced, and, and I'll uh, itemize the, these. Uh, no product design changes were allowed and no changes to the product uh, upstream manufacturing processes. There were plant floor constraints and limited space to be able to, to place a solution. The flexible nature of the product made part handling very difficult. And the collapsible neck, which required the hermetic seal itself, was very fragile. And finally, as a sterile product, uh, good manufacturing practices dictated that 100% uh, defect detection and re rejection took place. If technically feasible, uh, low pressure overmolding with a compatible material uh, would have been an, e an elegant solution and that's what uh, ATS focused on initially. Uh, generating enough heat in a confined space would fuse the two plastic parts together creating the, the aseptic hermetic seal. Uh, you know, very quickly ATS realized that uh, standard off-the-shelf solutions did not exist and that uh, typical injection pressures would collapse this plastic part. Space constraints were and an awkward part to hold also meant that uh, typical robotic part tending on an injection machine uh, was not a solution either. So with the problem understood, uh, ATS moved ahead with a structured engineering process, and I'll outline very quickly here the, uh, the seven-step engineering process that allows us to mitigate risks and achieve the uh, ultimate solution. A functional requirement specification was developed um, and written off the customer's user requirement specification. This is in response to the customer URS and states to the customer we really understand the, the problem. Uh, from that, we developed vendor technical specs, or what we call VTS documents, which clearly define the scope for subcontractors. Thirdly, a master validation plan was prepared, clearly identifying the success criteria and how that would be measured. Steps four, and the first in, in three design steps, involve the development of concepts of how the critical overmolding uh, 
subsystem would be integrated. Steps five and six looked how the incoming materials would be handled and how the overall arrangement would fit into the continuous manufacturing line. Design iterations required multi multiple disciplinary teams, uh, including customers and subcontractors. ATS was also able to bring uh, unique cross-industry experience to the table. The final engineering step was to conduct process simulation and proof of principle testing to mitigate the risks uh, identified during design development. In this case, through proof of principle exercises, ATS was able to determine the maximum threshold pressure that uh, the collapsible part would be able to tolerate such that low molding, uh, low pressure over molding uh, would work. And so we developed the confidence and convinced the customer to proceed further. The result of the design efforts and the search resulted in uh, four best-in-class suppliers being identified. Uh, this is Husky Injection Molding, uh, who supplied custom hot runner mold solution. Arberg, who supplied um, injection units and some of the major press elements. Primus, uh, who had some custom and in mold sensing and process balancing technology that tied into the overall high-speed control platform that was provided by Rockwell Automation. Pulling together a, a dream team, if you will, doesn't always result in success. And I think uh, in this case, um, coming back to the customer's original specification and keeping the customer's needs at the, at the center of the process resulted in success. Uh, and with strong project management, the decisions that were made driving the uh, program and the steps we took came forward and came naturally. These certainly included uh, meeting GMP requirements, uh, meeting the economic model that the customer had put forward for us, and certainly providing a system that was sustainable through ongoing manufacturing operations. ATS's role in this operation was the turnkey integration supplier, taking on responsibility for the overall delivery of the program, the risks associated with it, and meeting the customer's performance criteria, schedule, and budget. ATS project managers then were able to execute and move ahead with the project, starting with a PEP, or project execution planning meetings where resources were aligned to support the overall program. Steps here and, and certainly in, in the PEP thing is looking at the resources, making sure that they're aligned and that throughout the process, the development and design development proceeded in a method where everyone could communicate what critical information they needed from others. Assembly and integration moved forward after design approval from the customer, and then acceptance testing followed, going right back to the master validation plan that was developed in step three of the engineering approach. Certainly in the end, we came up with a fully tested and pre-qualified system that we were able to supply to this medical device customer. So, how were the challenges met? The handling issues were overcome by developing a puck transportation system where the containers were sorted and routed uh, to the molding cavities. A custom 35 ton press was developed. It was a bi-closure press where both sides of the mold actually moved in on the part as opposed to one platen moving only. A hot runner system was developed that allowed the uniform flow of plastic across a wide expanse of these cavities 
In fact, we were molding uh, 32 at once, 32 up. Custom sensing technology uh, detected melt front temperatures at the point of injection and with closed loop controls the system was able to allow us to make real-time adjustments to uh, melt temperature changing the viscosity of the plastic at the injection site. This allowed for actually developing uh, the volume of shot from shot to shot. A second level of control system was put in place that monitored the actual pressure of the injection within the cavity which allowed us to ensure repeatable uh, pack out and that the plastic injected would be filled and cooled in the same way. Unacceptable quality defects such as short shots, flash and void were eliminated through this pressure control and ultimately the injected material uh, melted the parent part together creating the hermetic seal which was originally set out to do in the first place. So in conclusion, uh, understanding the problem, identifying critical to success factors, following a planned engineering approach, and most importantly identifying best-in-class suppliers allows you to proceed and succeed when it hasn't been done before. Um, I would ask that you consider ATS to be one of those best-in-class suppliers and would like to be able to talk in, in detail with opportunities that you might have. We are located at uh, booth 4211, which is uh, just on the other side of this adjacent wall, at the other end of the hall. And uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about ATS. Uh, certainly, we are a company with a diverse background. Uh, serving in many industries in terms of energy, transportation, consumer products, uh, life sciences. Uh, ATS offers end-to-end uh, -end programming, getting involved very early in the pre-automation services and um, are willing to share risks in a win-win situation with our customers. Not everything has a clear solution when you begin and, and ATS through uh, 30 years and over 15,000 systems employed understands risks and are certainly willing to share that with our customers. We provide a, a one-stop turnkey shop, take full responsibility for the outcomes we commit to and have the capacity on a global basis to handle large-scale projects. So again I welcome you and invite you to uh, booth 4211 to be introduced to ATS Automation and Sortomatis Assembly Technologies. Thank you.